Yes, Ning Guang evacuate everyone, but no one will listen. If danger comes, Chi Chi will protect everyone. A great wrath brews in the sea. I don't know where this wrath comes from, so let's keep our distance for the time being. Hello. Are you here for something off the shelf, or do you need something forged? Excuse me, Master Zhang. We were wondering if you'd heard of something called a Wonder Core. Of course I have. Sorry, um, who's that? Weaponry for my father in the past, for stage use. Yun Jin? Stage use? Oh, so <clears throat> you must be Miss Yoon. <clears throat> Sorry. My brain's finally caught up. <sighs> It's not used to doing much beyond bashing a hammer all day. <laughs> Everyone's heard of you, Miss Yoon. Even folks who don't make it to the opera all that often. <laughs> like myself. So, you're here to ask about wonder cores, huh? As it happens, I do know how to make them. Matter of fact, I made some for Lady Ningguang back when she was building the original Jade Chamber. The types of ore needed to make wonder cores are a little hard to come by. Lady Ningguang supplied them herself last time. I don't suppose you've brought any yourselves? No. We were gonna ask you what kinds of ore we need. <laughs> sure. Well, you'll need two kinds. Star Splinter Iron and Subrosium. If I remember correctly, Lady Ningguang sourced her Star Splinter Iron from the Mount Tianhung area. They say it resonates with visions. It could take some work, but if you stick with it, you'll find some eventually. As for the Subrosium, though, hmm, that's trickier. It's all but unheard of on the market. Uh, I'm really not sure. Sorry. What I've heard is that the people around Mount Tianhung have some sort of magic trick that can pinpoint the location of the stuff. Of course, it's probably just hearsay. If you want my advice, start by looking for Star Splinter Iron around Mount Tianhung. And if you run into any locals, ask them a few questions about Subrosium. Mount Tianhung. Interestingly enough, the story of the Divine Damsel of Devastation also takes place on that mountain. I hear the view there is quite spectacular. A favorite destination of the Adepti, in fact. Perhaps it can give me some inspiration. Let's not delay. We should head straight there.
Work hard and live each day to the fullest. That is what life in Mondstadt is all about, isn't it? Everything is negotiable, except overtime. Don't we have a job to do? Everything is negotiable, except over time. I came to Mount Tianung once with my father as a child. I remember it being such a long climb that I could barely feel my legs by the time we reached the top. <laughs> this is quite a trip down memory lane for me. Look at no wonder the legend of the Divine Damsel of Devastation is said to have taken place here. The Divine Damsel of Devastation is your upcoming opera, right? And the story takes place in Mount... What's the story about? It's the story of a girl becoming a hero. Cool! A hero story? The legend first arose in this area. 
It is said, in that village, there was a loving couple who were completely devoted to one another. One, the wife was out collecting herbs and was... The vile and vicious monster told the villagers, If you want to live, you must sacrifice a child to me. What a nasty piece of work! Ugh. But the monster was so terrible and so strong that all within the village were terrified of it. They had no choice but to give in to the monster's demand. Just while they were discussing whose child would be given over to the monster, a little girl suddenly stood up and came forward. No! D Unbeknownst to anybody else, she was concealing an exorcist's blade. She approached the monster's lair, feigning fear and trepidation. When she finally arrived, she courageously drew her sword and entered into a fierce struggle with the monster, from which she eventually emerged as the victor. Her extraordinary abilities drew the attention of the Adepti, and they took her. And so, destined to grace the mortal realm... I really like this story. But I personally think that perhaps the little girl was... not as brave as the opera makes her out to be. I'm not sure she deserves all the praise she is given. Hmm, I've never considered that before. Opera is always an interpretation of the events it purports to portray. When my father wrote the script for this play, I suppose his intention was to inspire his audience with the character of the Divine Damsel. Hmm. I think it's a great story. The ideal story. Well, it sure inspired Paimon! Let's... I think I saw a village on our way here. Master Jong said we should ask the locals for help. Why don't we try there? We were just passing by, and wanted to ask if you happen to know anything about Sabrosium. <sighs> Is he trying to tell us to look for clues in the village? Shenhua, Yunjin. Sorry, you can go ahead without me. I'd like to have a word with this gentleman, if that's okay with you. Huh. Shenhua, you're alive. The rumors were true. So, all these years? 
I'm sorry I don't know how to find Subrosium, but I think you can find some information in the village. And this place is deserted now. No one ever comes here. So you can rummage around all you want. Huh? You know this guy, Shenhua? Uh... Thank you, kind sir. We'll go and take a look around. Don't worry. Mingjun has no ill intention towards Miss Shenhe. She'll be quite safe. Okay. Then let's see what... The remains of a god, an abandoned village, Mount Tianhang. Does this mean that the true story of the Divine Damsel of Devastation happened right here, in this village? The time frame certainly matches, so it seems we're in the right area. Let's keep looking around. So, Shenha is the Divine Damsel? Now that I think about it, she does behave rather like an Adeptus, and she is about the right age. So that's why I've been getting the strangest feeling whenever I chat with her. I should have noticed it earlier. According to this text, the Divine Damsel from the opera was actually the daughter of the loving couple. And she didn't volunteer. She was sacrificed to the monster by her own father oh the truth is even more lamentable than the opera now i understand why shenha said the girl was not as brave as people think it wasn't her choice to enter that ghastly situation she was forced into it oh it looks like my father may need to make a few revisions to his beloved opera but still no mention of Sabrosium. Let's have a look over there. Huh. This is it! So basically, we need to go to the middle of the lake south of Mount Tianhung at dusk, and we'll find us some Sabrosium! Let's go back and tell Shen... <laughs> One year when I was back visiting, I heard a story about a white-haired adeptus from a merchant passing by. I never imagined it was you. I was a very close friend of your father's. I could have stopped him from performing the summoning ritual. I had plenty of chances, but I couldn't bring myself to stand up to him. I just let things happen, let it all escalate. And, well, we all know how that story ended. I bring flowers back here every year. And each time I wish I had a chance to apologize to you. Apologize for what? If you'd stopped him, he'd only have found another way. There is nothing he wouldn't have done for his true love. Nothing. Do you still... hate him? I don't know what I feel. I'm told my fate is to bear the curse of calamity, so my master bound my soul with red ropes to curb my aggression. But... It also dampened my emotions, making me dispassionate, like the Adepti. 
So if you ask me how I feel about the past, if I hate my father or not, the truth is, I feel nothing at all. to stand up and protect others, just like the girl in the opera. <laughs> 